Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Marilyn Devanish is training us on how to read and understand at 25,000 words per minute using a process called photo reading. Marilyn, I've got a couple of questions that will help us get to know you at uh, more of a personal than a professional level. Here's the first one. What is the best decision that you consider you've ever made? So one of the best decisions I've ever made is what we're going to be talking about today. And you'll see why when I start explaining, but it absolutely changed my life. And I cannot imagine what my life would be like without photo reading. And it took a leap of faith. Um, it took some struggle. It took getting over myself and believing that such a thing could even be possible. However, to this day, 20 years later, I am thankful every single day that I invested the money in what were tapes back then and that I jumped on a plane and flew out to America to learn to be a photo reading instructor. And I'll share some of that story with you all today. Oh, OK. My second and last question is this. What is your absolutely most favorite way of relaxing? For me, my most favorite way of relaxing is something called Hawaiian Huna, H-U-N-A. So there's a component called ha breathing. And I use that either just for a quick 30 to 60 second burst, or I use it when I'm doing a bigger meditation process. And that has also been part of my daily life for the past 20 years. And it's one of my favorite modalities and one of my clients' favorite modalities as well. <laughs> You're a lady with eclectic tastes. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, participants, if you have questions, please, uh, please type them into the chat. And at various times during Marilyn's talk, I'll pose them to her uh, that way. By the end of our hour, you'll have all your questions answered. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but I encourage you anyway to take notes because the simple act of you taking notes will increase what you absorb by as much as 30-ish 30, uh, percent. Marilyn, are you ready to wow us and rock the stage? As I now say, I was born ready. <laughs> Take it away, she's all yours. Wonderful, right, I've started my stopwatch as well, so I should keep an eye on that. So hello and welcome. My name is Marilyn Devonish, Neuro Success Coach, and I'm gonna be talking to you today, as Roger has said, about how you can read at 25,000 words per minute. So first thing I want to do is just say thank you for the invitation and thank you to everyone around the world who is watching this live or also watching this as a recording. It is fantastic to be here. Purpose of this training is to share with you some strategies that you can use to increase your reading speed, improve your focus, your concentration, your memory and your productivity, and also sharing with you how you can remember for those of you who speak, who present, who are storytellers, how can you do that with more of a sense of flow? And how can you create more time and more hours in your day? Because I know a lot of people find a challenge with getting through everything they have to do and everything they have to read. In terms of some key takeaways, one of my favorites is going to be moving from what I call a state of stressful urgency into that place of relaxed alertness. We're also going to be looking at how you can get yourself into what we call the flow state, which comes with a host of benefits, some of which we'll talk about as we go through here today. And the key thing is how can you get through written information more quickly and more efficiently and be able to remember, recall and apply what it is you've been reading and learning. So why photo read first of all in terms of just setting some of the background and context and I'm always rather ambitious in what we're going to do so we've got quite a lot we want to cover I speak pretty quickly um, I teach accelerated learning so everything that's probably going to come out of my mouth is summarized in the slides as well and my suggestion if you're note taking for those of you who know how to mind map rather than linear notes I would say play with some mind mapping to note down the key points as, as we go through so why photo read first thing and the biggest thing for me is how you can literally power through information 
in minutes rather than days, weeks, months, years, or even decades. I think the oldest book that someone brought to a photo reading workshop, they'd had it for nearly 20 years. They were given it at university, never read it. It's also about improving your memory, your concentration, your focus, your recall, your decision-making skills. It's about enhancing your intuition. So all of those things come part and parcel when you learn this particular process and system. And it's an easy way for you to enhance your business skills, your, if you're studying, and also it has a knock-on effect on your daily life. And this was one of the things that I didn't expect when I first came across it. So we'll talk about that as well. Now, I know that this probably sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie where we're talking about reading at 25,000 words per minute. The gentleman you can see on the screen is Dr. Kos Fantis. He's a medical doctor. And when he came to my photo reading workshop, he was a trainee neurosurgeon. So he knows about the brain from the inside out. And on the very first evening, because we do a Friday evening, then a Saturday and Sunday. And on the Friday, he said to me, have you seen the movie, movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper and Robert De Niro? I said, no, haven't seen it. I've seen it many times now, but I hadn't seen it back then. And I said, why? And he said, everything you're teaching is in the movie. The only difference is we don't have to take a dangerous silver pill. He said, the only thing you're not doing is time shifting. And if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I mean by the time shifting. He came back on the Sunday afternoon and he said, I take that back. I've changed my mind. And I said, what's that? He said, we are time shifting because I cannot believe how much information we've covered, the speed at which we covered it. And how it has still, even though we were going at speed, how it's all been layered in and everyone has completely transformed from where they were at the start of that Friday evening. So if you haven't seen the movie Limitless, highly recommend it. And if you don't want to take a silver pill, this is a really viable alternative for you. So before we get started, and Roger, I might want your assistance with this one, is I want you just to think about your purpose for being here today, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening for you. And the question is, what would make this a valuable and worthwhile meetup and networking event for you? And you might think of it in terms of what do you want to know? What would you like to learn? or what do you want to take away from this session? So I'll give you a minute or so just to write down one or two things that would make this a worthwhile session for you. And if you want to put that into the chat, and if Roger, you wanted maybe to shout out a few of the things that people have said, we can do that. So just um, about a minute, just to very quickly write down your purpose for being here on this session when you think about all of the other things you could have been doing with this time. New information, potentials and possibilities and new ideas. Focus. I'd like to be able to read my great books and future ones at a fast speed without losing comprehension. Retention, to learn to read at 25,000 words per minute. I'm a slow reader. I'd like to read faster, learn things faster. I want to actually get through my college textbooks. I want to learn to read faster and retain information. Slow reader, want to learn faster. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That is amazing. I appreciate that. So you're in the right place. So far, so good. So we are going to go through what we call some focus questions today. We're going to talk about what is photo reading? Who is it for? What are some of the benefits in terms of life, in terms of business, and in terms of those of you who are studying? We're going to talk about what is the photo reading whole mind system, and I'm going to give you an overview of that. We'll talk about how it works in practice, and we're going to do that via sharing with you some case studies from previous clients who have taken the photo reading workshop or done the one-to-one -one coaching sessions. We're also going to talk a bit about how do you actually rewire your brain and, and have it work differently and more effectively for you. And we will also round off with any questions that you have about things that we've covered and touched on today. So that's really where we're heading in Marilyn, a nutshell, are you open for a question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Adrian would like to know if what we're going to be talking about is applicable to people with dys dyslexia. Absolutely. And that's step one of photo reading. Thank you. No, no further questions. You're most welcome. 
So photo reading in a nutshell, it's an accelerated reading and learning technique, which looks at how you can get through written information more quickly while being able to remember, recall and apply what you've read. The basic premise talks about photo reading at 25,000 words per minute and how to photo read a whole book from start to finish in approximately five minutes. So that is that that's our starting point, And that's what photo reading is in a nutshell. And generally speaking, we tend to traditionally read at anything from 150 to 200, 250 words a minute. So 25,000 words a minute sounds pretty fast. However, we'll probably talk about that later and why it's quite a low baseline number. In terms of who created it, just so you get a sense of how long it's been around, was created in 1985 by Dr. Paul Sheely. Paul is the person in the orange shirt with the blue t-shirt or in the black t-shirt in the picture on the right. One of the things I want to bring to your attention with that picture that I can see top right, there's a whiteboard behind us. Even though Paul Sheely created photo reading, we're all still learning and discovering what else it can do. And 20 years on, I am still blown away every single day by new things that I discover and the things that my clients are able to do with their photo reading skills. So I always say to my students, forget about the idea of trying to learn everything there is to know about photo reading, get the basics under your belt and then remain open to the possibility because it is really a powerful journey of discovery. Question I'm asked a lot, who is photo reading for? I've had coaches, trainers, consultants, entrepreneurs, crystal healers, accountants, marketing executives, doctors, surgeons, lawyers, you name it, I've had it. Um, and age range, that's a question I get asked a lot as well. I've had younger students age seven, older student age 70 plus and everything in between. So it's not age dependent, it's not context dependent, it's not subject dependent. It really is now coming down to do you want a more efficient way to get through your reading and get things done in what would appear to other people to be record time. So I just wanted to answer that one. Now to give you, to start opening up your mindset in terms of possibility, just so you can start to see what's possible, I'm gonna share with you a couple of examples from previous clients and customers. So this is a lovely lady called Naomi Tamayama. She's a business owner, entrepreneur and single mum. And I just happened to see this post on Facebook one day and I says, Naomi, can I quote you? So for those of you who maybe are on a smaller device, it says, I have spent less than an hour reading eight books on a topic and have just compiled a piece of work from this. That's one hour, eight books. And she compiled a piece of work. So when I say it's a game changer and it's a life changing and it's a real life skill, I'm not messing about. And this was someone who had, she'd done the photo reading workshop a few months prior and was now just putting into practice everything she'd learned over that two and a half days. This is another of my clients. She was doing a teacher training course. And when she walked in on the Friday afternoon, she slammed that book on the table and said, if any of you are suffering from insomnia, here's the cure and threw it on the table. And she was actually thinking of giving up the teacher training course. On the Sunday afternoon, I was doing something at the front of the room and I heard her say, now where's my little Bible? And I thought, let me just see which book she reaches for. And she reached for the book that she loathed on the Friday night and was beaming. And I said to her, stop right there. That's a Kodak moment. And I took, and she was holding the book front, front ways. And I said, turn it sideways so we can see how thick that book is. So I have people who will fall in love with reading again as a result of learning this skill. Now, Marilyn, a quick crazy. question, quick question yeah, from it. Pascal. How long does it take to learn the basics? If I were working with someone one to one, if I were doing like a one to one coaching session, I would say we need give it a, a minimum of four hours, but ideally five or six hours. If someone's doing the workshop on the or the online video webinar version it's two and a half days, the equivalent of about 21 to 22 hours. Thank you. Nothing further. You're most welcome. So I did this one because I had lawyer, I, you know, my sister's a lawyer. Her ex-husband was a judge and I knew lots of lawyers. So I kind of said to them, look, OK. How, how many hours do you read a day? Now, my sister said, 
I could be reading all day. Sometimes I'm reading 12 to 15 hours a day. The numbers were too big. People wouldn't have believed that. So I just pared it down and I just, I just said, okay, let me just go with the basics. What a regular person might read in a day if they had a, a similar kind of job. Hourly rate, hundred pounds to a thousand pounds an hour from a, a, a kind of a trainee to a top silk. So cost of reading per day, 500 to 5,000 pounds per day. Then what I did, made some adjustments for holiday time and a, a little bit of weekend time, figured out maximum that's 1.2 million pounds a year that is spent reading in terms of time because they charge by the hour. So if they were to save just one hour per day, that's about 24,000 pounds, pushing up to quarter of a million pounds a year, depending on the level of seniority you are. So one of the things I'm always asking my clients, even if they don't charge themselves out by the hour, is what is your time worth to you? And what will you do with an extra hour a day? Now you'll probably get more hours in the day in terms of time saving, but just think about the hour. And the reason I want you to decide right now up front, nature abhors a vacuum. And if you don't decide what you're gonna do with that time, it just gets frittered away. So I made a decision when I started to seriously photo read what I was going to do with the extra time. And I've adhered to that for the past 20 years that I've been a photo reader. For those of you who are studying or you've got children that are homeschooling, I always say this is one of the best gifts you could ever give them because they come out of that weekend with a renewed sense of confidence, self-esteem, self-worth. And I just say, imagine at 11 years old, seven years old, nine years old, knowing what you are capable of and believing in yourself. I didn't get to that point until I was 32 years old. So that was a lot of time wasted. So it really does work in very, very interesting and quite dramatic ways. And for those of you who might at this point be thinking, oh, well, you need special skills. This is Kay, one of my clients. She was in a near fatal plane crash. That The picture on the left is the field that her light aircraft went down in. Unfortunately, her partner was killed in the crash. She was minutes away from death. And it was something like a Hollywood movie where the, the person who was closest and ha who had the skill to save her was just walking into court. He, was, he literally took his phone out to turn it off and it rang. And somebody said, we need you now, there's been a crash. He then says to the court clerk, I'm so sorry, tell the judge I've got to go. He turned around, went to the field and basically did a lung puncture right there. And so there's a whole blog about it. If you want, I'll send the link to Roger. I'll put it in the chat later. But she was left with brain damage and she had brain damage for the seven years that I knew her. And she used to say to me every couple of years, I mean, you should do your photo reading. Will your photo reading workshop help me with my, and I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure it will. Yeah, pretty sure it will. Yeah, and this went on for, for years. She finally came to the workshop on the Friday night. So we'd only been doing it for four hours. She was tearful. She brought her daughter with her. And she said, Marilyn, I really wish I had done this workshop when you first told me about it. She had a meeting on the Monday. We finished on the Sunday and we were in the room till 10 o'clock just chatting and hanging out and socializing. And this is the part of the message she sent to me. She says, Marilyn, your photo reading course has cha really changed everything. My brain feels rewired. And she has had brain, well, had brain damage for many, many, many years. So you do not need special skills. You can start from where you are. And in case if anyone's wondering if it works online, just a couple of uh, quotes from people who have done the video webinar on demand version um, in terms of how they found it um, good, flexible, they can choose their location, intense and fun delivery. You're probably getting a little flavor of that already. Someone else said it's inspiring, creative, intensive, engaging and brilliant. And someone said else said fun, energizing, mind expansive and effective. So it is something that can also be done remotely. So- Marilyn, question? Yes. How, how, do, how does photo reading and people with dementia work together? Now that's an interesting one. I'm gonna share a little bit about it from the, I can't speak to the dementia piece. I can speak to the early onset Alzheimer's piece. So that's gonna come up a bit later on if they wanna hold, hold on to that question for a few moments, if that's all right. Fine, no further questions. Uh, Fantastic. So if you have a book handy, what I would love you to do now is grab your book. If you haven't, because Roger is very kindly recording this, this is one that you can come back to. But what we are going to do is we're going to do a quick reading test. 
So grab a book, preferably non-fiction, but anything you like, anything you have handy. If you don't have a book, it might be a magazine or a newspaper. And here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna use your own book or material. You're gonna read for one minute. That's it. Read for one minute. So grab a book and I'll give you a few seconds to do that. And if you're watching the recording, press pause, grab a book, come back, press play. So, and what I'll do is I've got, I've got my timer here. So I'll be checking the time. So for those of you I can see, and Roger, you can probably see a few more people as well. Do you wanna give a thumbs up if you have something that you can read? Perfect, wonderful, great. I can see some thumbs. Wonderful, thank you all. Brilliant. So at the top of the top of the minute, I'll tell you when you're going to start. And just read as you would normally, just grab somewhere, open the book, read as you would normally and make a note of the page that you're starting on. So you might start on page 26, note that down somewhere so you know what page you're starting on. And your one minute starts now. And if you're someone who reads and back skips, you read and back skip. If you're someone who reads and talks to yourself in your head, you read and talk to yourself in your head. Just do what you traditionally normally do. So you got another 15 seconds. Okay, so what you're going to do now, first of all, you're going to calculate the number of pages you've read. And for some, it might be a quarter of a page, half a page, one page, two pages. Just write down the number of pages that you've read. And then what I want you to do is just notice your experience of that one minute. Were you relaxed? Were you chilled? Were you thinking, oh my gosh, what's the test? Were you kind of, was it fast? Was it slow? Was it distracted? Was it focused? And just write down a couple of words that describe how that minute was for you. And if you want to throw anything in the chat, you can do that as well. Very unfocused, says Janelle. Brilliant. Rush, says uh, Denian. Right, thank you. It was hard to focus when you kept talking through it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you've just been scolded, Marilyn. Uh, distracted, relaxed. Oh. I feel I was trying to beat the clock. Please, pleasant, but easily, but not much retention. Rush, not much retention. Pleasant but easily distracted. Third of a page was feeling quite nervous and anxious while reading it. Chest, uh, Chester, that was exactly my reaction to. Marnie, I was focused and trying to picture what was happening in the story. Darren, stressed and distracted. Uh, name I can't pronounce. I don't have any sound. Okay. Hopefully they will get sound on the recording. And you've done that bit that I wanted to, you to do is write down. So, and now this is what you can do with the results of this. You look at the number of pages you've read because we just did one minute. Multiply that by 60. That's going to roughly tell you how many pages you would read in an hour. Then what I want you to do is shave off a little bit of time, because if you're reading for an hour, there's that thing where your mind is wandering. You're thinking about something else. You're getting distracted. You're maybe going back over something you've read because you didn't think you got it first time round. So you shave off a little bit of time and that will just give you your baseline number and your approximate reading speed per hour in terms of how many pages you might traditionally get through. Then the question is, are you happy with your reading <coughs> speed? If you are, great, we're done here. If, however, you think I need to be able to read faster than that and I need to get better comprehension, I need to be more in flow, then continue. That's what we're going to be talking about. But it's just a quick baseline exercise. We do a slightly longer version in the workshop, but this just gives you a little bit of a taster, even in 60 seconds. So 
I've talked about this thing called photo reading. This is the photo reading whole mind system. And there are five steps, very simple steps. Step one is where, and I'm going to tell you what the steps are. I'm going to very, do a very quick overview. Then we'll do a, what you call a break state. And then we're going to come back to the first of these steps and do it as an exper experiential exercise. So you get a sense of how it feels. So step one is where you get yourself physically and mentally prepared. So that involves relaxing your breathing, being in what we call expanded awareness or peripheral vision. And if I've got any of my Huna people watching, it's called Hakalau. It's also where we use this thing called the tangerine technique, where you imagine that you have a tangerine above and slightly behind your head and where you set your purpose for what it is you're about to read. So you decide at step one, what is it you want to get from the book that you're working with? And you're saying to yourself, okay, what do I need to know? What do I need to learn? What do I actually want to take away from the book that I'm going to be working with? So that's your step one. When you get step one under your belt, you can do that in as little as 30 to 60 seconds. On the workshop, we start with what I call the bells and whistles version, where we do a whole meditation process that takes 10, 15 minutes. But throughout the week, I say the weekend because I normally run it on a Friday evening and a Saturday and Sunday. But throughout the two and a half days, we're then reducing that and reducing that and reducing that until people get anchored into that state. And they pretty much just think, get prepared. And for if any of you know NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, you get anchored into that state. And as soon as you think about step one and any of the components of that, all of that starts to click into the neurology. So step one is where you get yourself physically and mentally prepared. And this thing that we call the tangerine technique, this is the thing that helps with dyslexia. So we'll talk about that um, in a few moments. Step two is where you now interact with the book and physically start working with it. And you do this thing that we call a preview. So you're looking at the front cover, you're looking at the back cover, you're looking at the contents page and the index page, because this is the way that the author tells you some of the key things that they have included in this book that are important enough to get their own men special mention. And then with the preview, and it takes 60 to 90 seconds for a regular size book, you're fanning backwards and forwards through the book, just having a look. And you're getting a sense of the style of the book, the layout of the book. Are there any pictures, graphs, diagrams, noticing things in bold, italics, graphs, bullet points, and it just gives you that first layer of familiarity. So you have a sense of what's coming up and the author's style. I call this the first handshake. So if we were at a, a live networking event, it will be, oh, hi, my name is Marilyn Devnish. Oh, lovely to meet you, Crystal. Hey, Lawrence, nice to meet you. Hi, Rana, hi, Gil. And you just do that very first handshake. On that first handshake, you're not trying to get someone's life history. You might just want a, hey, you know, where did you travel from today? You know, we talked about the weather, for example, when we first came on, and it's just that first layer of familiarity. So in the same way you would do a scan of a person, you do an overview and a preview of the book. What that does in terms of your mind and your brain, what it does is it lays down what we call the first layer of familiarity. And the more familiar your brain is with something and your mind is, the easier it is for you to learn, even if that's just been 60 to 90 seconds, so a minute and a half. We then have step three, which is called photo reading. So it's called the photo reading whole mind system. And step three is also called photo reading. And this is where we are going through the book from start to finish. And we're turning the pages at the rate of one second per page and doing what I call a data download. So this is how I imagine it works. You've got the book and you're tipping the contents into your head, into your brain and into your neurology. However, it's not random because in step one, you decided what material do I want to pull out of the book? So as you're doing step three and turning the pages at the rate of one second per page, your brain has already had instructions about 
what do you want to know? What do you want to learn? What do you want to take from this material? And the way that works, there's something called the RAS, your reticular activating system. It's like a magnet. You tell that part of your brain what you want and it wakes up. So now as all of this information is coming in at the rate of one second per page, your brain is scanning and saying, not that, not that, oh, that's interesting. Okay, yes, that meets my purpose. No, 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 yes, that does. And it starts sifting and sorting on your behalf. Now this is all happening outside of your awareness. You've got, you, you've got no idea consciously what's happening, but all of this is neurologically happening in the background. So that's your step three, and that will take roughly five or six minutes, depending on the size of your book. Question, then, Marilyn? Yeah. Uh, does this work for electronic books or only physical books? And the second question is, uh, does this apply to fiction and nonfiction equally? Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. Okay. And then the next question from Nazarin, but what about reading the math books or physics books or computer language books with a lot of details and long formulas? Okay, one of the things that really blew my mind, now this was probably about six or seven years ago, I had a maths teacher, he had a degree in maths and he was doing his PhD, was struggling. Now, I had, that's the first time I'd had somebody bring a maths book to the photo reading workshop. So he comes to the workshop and then I did a six month mastermind group after that. So once a month we would meet up on a webinar and then, you know, teleseminar and then we graduated to a webinar. And um, he said, there's a formula. I couldn't do it when I did my degree. I couldn't understand it when I did my master's. Still don't, didn't understand it. Now I'm doing my PhD. But I, every month I give them a different task to do. And so he said, I did what you said. I photo read the formula. He said, Marilyn, I've, un I can, I've understood the formula. I've been able to work it upside down and back to front and I've taught it to my students. So he was photo reading maths books and formulas and it still worked. So that in a nutshell is the answer to that question. I could give you loads more examples, but that is that's what a specific one in terms of that particular um, topic. And it is not subject dependent. You can do it with fiction, you can do it with nonfiction. We start with nonfiction first because there's a better structure to the book, but you can photo read novels and you just tend to get a deeper experience of them and they're more 3D and it really brings them to life. Any more questions before we carry on? No, nope. all your back to you. Fabulous. Step four is where we do what we call a post view. So very similar to your preview. However, now you're paying more conscious attention to and what I call signpost in the book. So you're deciding when I now get into the activation stage, which is the biggest step, where am I starting? Which chapter am I going to? Is there a particular page number? Is there a segment of the book? And so you're mentally now setting up what you're going to do next time you interact with the book. And then step five, the activation step. I call activation, this is like the key that unlocks the door. So far, everything that's been happening is inside of your brain and it's inside of your neurology and it's happening in your memory. You don't really know what's going on. Activation is now you take the key and you turn it. And this is where you start waking up the brain and where you start getting what I call those wonderful light bulb moments where suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, there's this, ding, ding, and there's this, and there's this, and there's this. And you start waking up and activating the material. This is a step that everyone wants to rush to. However, if you haven't properly laid the foundations, there's going to be nothing there for you to activate. So as, as much as it's probably the most satisfying step, this is the one that comes at the end for a reason, because you want to give everything a chance to incubate, as I call it. A bit like, now, I don't bake, but at school, I remember being taught how to bake bread, and you add the yeast, and then you put a damp towel over it, and you have to leave it to rise. It's exactly the same with photo reading. Our mind and our brain needs time to incubate. And what sits at the center of all of this is having a clear sense of purpose, because the clearer you are, 
about what you want to get from the book and the material, whatever it is you're reading. And yes, in terms of the other question, you can do electronic documents, PDFs, you can photo read your emails, whatever you want, newspapers, magazines, physical books, Kindles. Kindles are a bit slow, they're better now, but we can, we can turn the pages faster normally than you can move the Kindle, but you can apply it to all of that material. And it doesn't matter what the medium is, but our brain needs a chance to assimilate what we've learned. So we then have what we call a break state where you step away from the material and you do something completely different. So we're gonna do something completely different for a few moments. And for those of you I've never met before, my name is Marilyn Devonish. I had a very traditional background, did a business degree, postgraduate marketing diploma with the Chartered Institute of Marketing, um, was studying to be a chartered accountant, but was very quiet, very shy. And I'll share with you in a few minutes how that journey went in terms of some health challenges that I had. And I've been a certified photo reading instructor since March 2002. I'm also what I would call a multidisciplinary therapist. I do about 20 different modalities and I'm also a corporate trainer and mental health first aid trainer. And I used to be terrified of public speaking. So the picture that you see there on screen, the little pink dot on the stage in front of thousands of people is me. And one of the things that photo reading allowed me to do was to be able to present without the use of no notes and just be able to remember and recall what I want to say and activate my brain in a way that would deliver that information. One of the things I've been doing for the past what will be now gosh 18 years is I write for newspapers and magazines about emotional health and well-being. I also am a business writer so these are some of the publications I've written for just in the past 12 months so Forbes, Huffington Post, People Management, Chartered Management Institute, uh, there's over 100 articles that I wrote last year. And one of the reasons I'm able to write that many articles in between everything else that I'm doing and come up with something new and unique and do the research that requires is because of photo reading and the things I'm going to share with you here today. So I don't show you that to go, oh, that's impressive. I show you that so you can see how you can actually put this into practice and utilize it. Because trust me, if you don't write good articles, they won't print them. Um, so photo reading helps greatly with that. Anything to do with transformation I'm interested in. The very first book that I co-authored was with Dr. Paul Sheely, the creator of photo reading. If you're into personal development, you may have heard of Tony Robbins, the late Dr. Wayne Dyer, Chun-Yi Lin, who created Spring Forest Qigong, his version of that, and business guru, Brian Tracy. And it's a physical book. It sits there on my shelf um, behind me. And I've also been a remote and flexible working consultant since 2003. So the new normal is my old normal. I've also been doing online coaching, online training and online therapy since 2005. So 15 years before the pandemic pivot um, and been teaching via video webinar since 2006. So, you know, my, my record in terms of utilizing different styles of learning is wide and varied. I'm also a corporate trainer and as well as delivering and designing trainings. And again, one of the reasons why I can often go from blank piece of paper to finish training course in a couple of days is using the skills that we're talking about here today. So there are a number of ways that photo reading can show up in your daily life when you put it into practice and when you utilize it. And my thing is always about wanting to make a lasting impression. So this is from one of my corporate clients. Her last segment sentence says, her, as in Marilyn's workshops, never disappoint and consistently leave you with a plan of action and an appetite for learning and an insatiable desire for self-discovery. And that's one of the things that I always want to do with when I interact with an audience. Even if I've just got an hour, I want to pique your curiosity to the point where you are are then excited about maybe something that didn't float your boat previously because not that many people particularly when it comes to academic study are that excited about reading and that's one of the things that people find as a result of the photo reading it just changes their whole perspective and before you kind of go well it's all right for you this was my personality right up until the age of 32 and I was diagnosed with what was thought to be early onset Alzheimer's in my 20s and my doctor has said there was absolutely nothing he could do for me and I struggled along for the best part of three and a half four years I know when I say that and when people see me now and when I say I was shy lacking in confidence low self-esteem 
all of that stuff. I know it's hard to believe. So in terms of me, I was studying to be a chartered accountant with the early onset Alzheimer's diagnosis. I was really struggling, had a memory like a sieve. I could read something five, 10, 15, 20 times, have no idea what I'd read. And I went to see my doctor eventually. I said, this is what's going on. These are the symptoms. And he said, it's from what you're describing and the way you're presenting, this looks like early onset Alzheimer's. So he gave me, he said, the only thing I can do for you is I can give you a medical certificate that you can give to the ACCA. This is a copy of the letter from the ACCA where they are confirming receipt of my the letter from my doctor about my medical condition. Because I have heard people say, really? And I'm like, yeah, totally. So that's the letter, just so you can see it documented in black and white. Um, and I, I just, I struggled even with the extra 30 minutes that they gave me. I was just sitting in the exam room, could barely write my own name on the piece of paper. And previous to that, when I did my degree, I think I was like 1.6% away from getting a first class degree, 1.3 or 1.6. Um, and I was working full time and studying full time. So to go from that to what I was then experiencing was devastating. A big turning point, and there have been many, but Roger, you're asking at the beginning, what was one of the best decisions I made? One of the best decisions I made was investing in photo reading, because when I did my NLP practitioner training, I had about two months to do an open book test, couldn't do it, could not get my head around it. And um, they apparently said when I handed it in, who is Marilyn Devonish? Is she lazy or stupid? Two and a half weeks later, I went back and did the master practitioner. What had happened when I was on the training, the guy who was leading the, the course, somebody said, how do you remember all of this stuff? Names, dates, places, case studies. And he said, I read 20 to 30 books a month. I was like, dude, obviously you don't get out much. I don't read that in a year. Someone then said, how do you do that? And he pointed to the resource table behind him and he pointed to the photo reading tapes that I had purchased two years prior and didn't bother to do it because it just sounded too outlandish. And so in the intervening two and a half weeks, I decided to go home, listen to those tapes with an open mind and apply it to the master practitioner test, which was gigantic compared to practitioner. And I went from worst in class to best in class in two and a half weeks. I was the only person out of a class of 65 people when I did the master practitioner who had no corrections. And when I did the, the practitioner test, I was going home with it every night and it was just full of red marks. And then the following year in May 2001, I did my NLP trainers training. It's an eight hour full one day exam. And I put a goal in my timeline, having then discovered the more esoteric side of life, that I'd be finished the exam in three hours, not eight, and I'd passed with flying colors. It was a closed book exam. Apparently when they saw my paper, they said, who is Marilyn Devnish and did she cheat? Because it was apparently like reading the textbook. Please note the date. The letter from the ACCA was dated May 2000. This is the 8th of May 2001. So my medical certificate was still valid. And that was one of those moments where I said, I've got to learn more about this because I've struggled for nearly four years and had no success within a couple of days of learning, teaching myself at that point how to photo read. I can feel the difference. So that was one of those defining moments. So we're going to play with your limitless genius potential. Because I want we, you to- Marilyn, before we there. do that, uh, there's yeah. a build up of questions. Okay. Um, first one, does this work with audiobooks? There's something called paraliminal learning. So yes, you would use the same principles from step one and apply it to whatever it is you're learning. How do you decide your purpose for the book if a book has caught your attention for the first time? You would start with something and improve it and refining as you go on. When you say activate in step five and you lightly touched on it, what precisely do you mean? We will touch on that as we go through the train, as we go through this presentation. Of course, we go into it in a lot more detail on the workshop itself. No further questions. Fabulous. Okay. 
So we're going to look at your how to play with your limitless and genius potential as per the movie Limitless. We're going to do what I call the 842 reading test. It's a little game we're going to play. We're going to have a go with maybe looking at reading backwards. We've already talked a bit about the reversing brain damage. We're going to talk a bit more about the dyslexia and the dyspraxia. We've talked about the lawyer equation. And if we've got a bit of time, I'm going to share with you some of those bonus um, side effects of photo reading a few of the client case studies, and of course, any final questions that you've got. So welcome to the world of photo reading. Now, I, I became an instructor in March 2002. I went over to America to train with Dr. Paul Sheely. He's based out in Minneapolis. And my purpose for this webinar, the reason the word introduces in red is because there's not time in one hour to teach you 21 hours worth of concept, but I want to start sharing with you how you can reduce the piles of books, how you can banish the guilt and anxiety and overwhelm that often comes with reading, how you can make learning and reading and researching a more fun and interactive process, things that you can do to start to double your reading speed and put an end to what I call shelf development, where your bookshelf is more educated than you because you're not touching the books, but the bookshelf is taking it all in and just some of the things you can do to unlock your limitless potential and get more done in less time. Some of the benefits, and this is one that we're going to do when we do step one, we're going to look at how do you flip the switch and start to activate relaxation, create creativity, and start opening up and expanding the mind and brain. We're gonna sh I'm gonna show you a process for left and right brain activation, both something that you can do as a physical process and also something you can do with the way that you move the body. A side effect of this, one of the side effects is that it enhances your intuition and your decision-making skills because when you're accessing both left and right brain and you're getting those into sync and harmony, it enhances everything that you're doing. And that's then where you can really start getting more done in less time. Some of the side effects, better use and leverage of your time, increased self-confidence, reduced stress and anxiety, a way to accelerate both your personal and your work performance, substantial client value add, we talked about that one with the lawyers. We'll go into it in more detail if you do the workshop and how to tap into what they call that 80 percent of untapped potential that Einstein is often you know, quoted as talking about. And ultimately, it brings peace of mind because a lot of people who come to the workshop, they have a version of imposter syndrome where then they're, they're just about keeping their head above water with what they have to do. And they're almost afraid that they're going to be found out and they're drowning under the weight of reading and paperwork. To enhance all that, we do a bit of energy healing work because I realized photo reading is very, very simple in terms of the step. Some of them take 60 to 90 seconds. It's people's belief in themselves that they can do it. So we also do a bit of belief change work on that very first evening to help you to open the doorway to being able to tap in the, into these innate skills that all of us have that we may not be tapping into. So we're gonna start now with breaking this down in a bit more detail. And this is a practical section, should you want to join in and, and kind of work along with this. Now, the overall purpose of the photo reading course is to get your reading done in the time that you have available to the level of comprehension that you need. So if you're a student taking exams, you need depth. If you're a consultant, trainer, business owner who needs to show up and be prepared for meeting, you probably need a, a kind of a, a surface level knowledge. You don't need as much depth as if you were sitting an exam. So you will then decide on the level of comprehension and that will determine how many activation sessions you do. You do and that's where we get to in step five. There are three overall objectives. The first part is about increasing the, your reading speed, learning how to increase your comprehension and getting more fluent and active with the material. The second part is how do you then really start accessing and expanding your brain function and getting your processing capabilities going? And the third part, which is traditionally day three, 
is how can you then demonstrate the photo reading skills and put them into practice in your daily life? So a bit like the quote I shared from Naomi, that was the demonstration of how photo reading was showing up in her daily life. And the part of your brain that we're gonna be using when we do the exercise in a few moments for step one, it's the relaxation channel. So it's where you start letting go of stress. You get into what we call the ideal state of mind. You're physically relaxed. We're using the tangerine technique and it's like opening the doorway to a whole different way of using your mind and a whole different way of using your brain. Typical starting point is people have got piles of books they haven't read, but would like to read. And that's how many people come to it. However, the other benefits that they experience, they often don't even expect that. And as I said, I'm not trying to do the whole course in 60 minutes, it's 21 hours. I speak fast, even I can't do that. I'll be doing photo reading a disservice. I'll be doing you a disservice as well because learning any kind of new skill, it takes time. And sleep is a part of the photo reading whole mind system. So as you go through each of the steps, we build in a couple of sleep cycles because that's the thing that is going to give your brain a chance to incubate and take on board what it's learning. So here we are again. Now, if we're on a regular workshop, one of the things that I would do is I'd be going around the room and saying, hey, who wants to tell me a bit about step one? Who wants to tell me a bit about step two? Who wants to tell me a bit about step three? And even though I'd only just touched on it for a few minutes, people can start at this point to just articulate something. I just, ah, just tell me anything that comes to mind because what I want to do is get people's neurological connections working. So for those of you who want to play along in the 15 minutes, well, 12 minutes that we have available, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, we're gonna do step one as an experiential piece so that you can get a sense of how it feels and I will talk you through it. So step one is called prepare. So you state your purpose. So this is the book, this is the photo reading book by Dr. Paul R. Sheely. What you would do is you state your purpose. So your purpose might be, what is photo reading? How do I photo read? Who is Dr. Paul Sheely? When can I use photo reading? Who can use photo reading? And you're just coming up with a question, something to start to focus the mind. And you can get more refined and you'll, you'll be refining your purpose as you go through the five steps. You then use what we call the tangerine technique. And this is a technique that was developed by someone called Ron Davis, who wrote a book called The Gift of Dyslexia. One of the things that he found is that people with dyslexia have what you call a roving point of attention. So their mind is jumping all over the place. People who are good readers, learners, and studiers tend to have a fixed point of attention. I'll, I'll, I'll scooch down a bit above and slightly behind the head. What that does is it focuses the mind. So when I have people doing the workshop who have dyslexia, dyspraxia, I don't, if you came into the room on the Friday evening after we'd done the first few and said, Marilyn, who here has dyslexia? I'd be like, I don't know. I don't hear another word about it. It doesn't even come up as an issue because when you really start using step one, it does something to your focus. It does something to your concentration. And because we're also tapping into the learning styles and the multiple intelligences, we're not trying to force you down a particular pathway. We're now doing what I call individualized learning, where we're using all of the senses and all of the multiple intelligences. So everyone now is on a level playing field. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, and then we're going to do it. First of all, I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath in and just relax the breathing. And if you choose to, you can also close your eyes. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna ask you that even whether your eyes are open or closed, I'm gonna ask you to imagine that your field of vision and of an, an awareness is opening up and expanding. And so it's almost as though you have a 360 degree view of what's going on around you. You're then going to imagine placing a tangerine above and slightly behind your head, so about six inches above your head, and you're gonna leave it there in midair. And then, depending on the book that you've grabbed off the shelf, you're gonna imagine that you have a screen in front of you and you are going to then be saying, okay, what is my purpose for the book? What's the first thing, just one thing 
I want to take from the book. And you imagine you maybe put that up on a whiteboard or a screen or a blackboard, depending on your age in front of you, because what that does, it starts to focus the mind on your purpose. So make sure you're sitting comfortably. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And just relax your breathing. Just notice the in breath. Notice the out breath. And relax the breathing. And then in your mind's eye, whether your eyes are open or closed, imagine your field of vision and awareness is opening up and expanding. So just imagine what's on your left and what's on your right. Imagine what's behind you. Imagine if you've got your eyes closed, what's in front of you. And just imagine you have a 360 degree awareness of what's going on around you. And then imagine that you are holding a tangerine and feel the weight, the shape, the color, the size. You might even imagine the smell and the taste and the texture of a tangerine. And then take that imaginary tangerine and place it above and slightly behind your head, creating that direct eye mind connection. Such that everything you are about to do and everything you're about to photo read makes a lasting impression on your inner mind. And then just imagine leaving that tangerine there floating in midair maintaining that sense of expanded awareness and then state your purpose and you might imagine that you have a whiteboard a screen a blackboard or just writing it in in midair what is your purpose what's the first thing you want to take from the book the pdf the ebook that you are about to read and just imagine writing your purpose out in front of you. And then maintaining that state of expanded awareness, maintaining that state of relaxing your breathing. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And if you've had your eyes closed, you can now open your eyes. And just notice, do you already feel more calm and more relaxed? Because that's the state of what we call relaxed alertness. And that's the state that you want to carry through as you go through the next steps. Now, this is something you can do in your own time and have a play around with it. I'm going to tell you how you do it. So after this segment, you can go away and have a play with it. But you can then, being in that state of relaxed alertness, you do your preview. So this is where you're appraising the book, the material you're about to read. Does it meet your purpose? Will it add value in terms of what you want to get from the book? This is going to take you 60 to 90 seconds. So a minute, minute and a half. You're going to look at the front cover the back cover, contents page, index page, and then you're just fanning backwards and forwards through the book. And in a minute and a half, you can probably go through the book five, six, seven, eight, nine times, depending on the size of the book. And you're just getting that first layer of familiarity. You might notice any words or phrases that jump out at you. And you're deciding based on my purpose, what I want to get from this book, is it a go or no go? Do I believe that it's not, is it a good book or not? Do I believe this book will deliver what I want to get from it? If it's a no, put the book back on the shelf, do the same process with another book. If it's a yes, you're now going to carry on working with that book. Now the preview, I see this like a movie trailer. It's like the coming attraction. So if you're looking, if you're using, doing it for a book for 60 to 90 seconds, if you're previewing an article, it might be as short as 30 seconds. You're looking at the structure, getting a sense of the style and the layout, because when you understand the style and the layout of an author, 
it means that even if you consider it to be a technical book, a difficult book, a challenging book, your brain starts to find its rhythm and flow and you will go through the book a lot more easily. And at this point, you've only invested a couple of minutes and you can determine at this stage whether or not it's the right book for you. And you will then determine how much time you are going to invest in it. Because I know people who will wade their way through a book only to get to the end and go, well, that wasn't any good. It wasn't what I needed. So really paying attention to that. Now, step three is the photo reading step. Let me just check my timer. There we go. Is my photo is a photo reading step. And this is where you're doing the data download. It's called the flip. So let me show you what's going on here. You get yourself into that accelerated learning state and the resource level. There's a little affirmation that you say, and we go into all of that on the workshop. And you get into what we call the photo focus state. And I'll show you a visual representation of what that looks like. And where it talks about maintaining a steady state, this is the rate that you're turning the pages of the book. And we're going at about one second per page. And then you have a closing affirmation that you use once you finish the photo reading step. So this is what it, this is what your, your vision is doing when you're photo reading. You're noticing the four corners. You're noticing the white space between the lines. And some people might imagine there's an X. So as you're turning the pages, you're noticing the four corners. And this is where you're doing a data download of all of the material. It's based on the work of someone called Betty Edwards, who's got a book called Drawing with the Right Side of the Brain. And again, we explain all of the process behind that in the Fuller Workshop. But step three is where you're taking all of the information on board and what it would look like if you're doing, I'll hold it up a bit, of course, I'm, I'm not looking at it, but this is what it looks like to do step three. And there's a little mantra that you say as you're going through, and that's the rate at which you are turning the pages and you're doing a data download. So this is what I call where you put all of the ingredients into the mix and you want to give them a chance to incubate. Now, the way that some people have used this, I've had people, this guy, the, the first one, failed his exams, three year running, was gonna give up on becoming a police sergeant. He was a Bobby on the beat. Um, we worked together for about, he only had an hour and a half, so it was a real rush. And he went, his bosses had said to him in no uncertain terms, that the younger guys are coming up through the ranks, maybe you're not sergeant's material. So he had made a decision. He was going to leave the police force. He'd been on the force since he was like 17, 18 years old. He's going to become a cl cl close, well, they call it close protection here, basically a bouncer. Um, we worked together for an hour and a half went back and did the exams. He was in the top 25 percentile for the entire country. Nothing wrong with his brain, something wrong with the strategy. I had a student who was thrown out of private school because he had dyslexia and dyspraxia. Um, Andrew and I, we probably worked together for about three hours, got a B. Um, so it's really, I had a trainee accountant. It was taking her four weeks just to read one, one book. That doesn't include note taking or doing exam practice. She got that down to 18 hours just after the workshop and got faster and faster there. And for those of you who are more spiritually inclined, there's a real esoteric side to this as well. So people have even used it to achieve their personal best in terms of athletics. I work with a triathlete, taught him through how to use step one and step two in a slightly different way and everything sort of opened up. So we talked about the lawyer equation. One of the things I'm gonna really sit down is just ask yourself if you had an extra hour, make a list of all of the things you would do with that time, because that is also going to wake up and activate your brain. We've got this thing called post view that you do after you photo read. And that's a step that, you know, it's very similar to your preview, just do it after you photo read. And we've got this thing called activate. So the, one of the last things I want to kind of ask you to do here is make some of these that I've got in red, your friend, incubate. Incubate means that you step away from the material. Ideally, we want one or two sleep cycles. So you sleep on it before you come to activate the material. Where we talk about review questions, start writing down questions about what you've initially seen, even though you are going through the material really fast. 
rapid reading is where you're going through the material and you're varying your speed. So sometimes you're going really quickly through. If it's not relevant, it's like yada, yada, yada. No, nope, no, nope, not relevant, not relevant, not relevant, not relevant. And then you'll start slowing down a bit more when you find something that meets your purpose. We pair this with something called rhythmic perusal, which means you're gliding along the lines. But if you just gave yourself a chance to incubate, even if you just 10, 15 minutes away from whatever it is you've been reading, you will be surprised at how that enhances your brain's efficiency in what it is you're doing. And when, I, and when we talk about mind probing, that one second from the bottom, I'm a real fan of asking myself questions. Okay, so how does that fit with that? And what would happen is that? And, da, da, da. and when you talk to yourself, you're also waking up your brain and you're activating those neurological connections. So last thing I want to do in closing today is I want to do a quick game because I want to show you how quickly and how efficiently your brain can work and how it can work at speed. Marilyn, so before you do that, can you take yep. a question? Yeah, go for it. Pascal wants to know if photo reading would help with proof reading. Absolutely. One of my clients, very first time I ran, I ran a big group of about 50 or 60 people. A lovely lady called Irene. Very quiet, very unassuming. She worked as a court assistant where she, you know, she carries the papers in and does all the filing and that sort of thing. So after the photo reading workshop, um, <laughs> she decided to photo read some court papers. Notice a few things that weren't right, pointed those out. They, 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 they said, oh, okay, thanks very much. And they were in court that, 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 that following week. The judge asked for a particular document. The solicitor had no idea. The brief had no idea. Irene comes from the back of the room. There's a big stack of papers and she just gently and very calmly leans over, pulls out the document, hands it to the solicitor, walks back to her seat. Everybody is astounded, like, how did she do that? And all she'd been doing is playing. And, and one of the things that you're going to be doing <clears throat> when you're proofreading is you are now telling your brain to find information and point out things <clears throat> that are not correct, that shouldn't be there, that need amending. So I use it all the time when I'm writing my magazine articles, when I'm reading things for other people, right down to going, there's an extra space between that word. And they'll go, no, there's not. And then they'll switch on the track changes and go, how did you know that? How did you see that? So it really is just, that'll be the purpose. You're going to say now, I'm going to change my purpose and your brain will do some fabulous proofreading. Anything else, Roger? No, back to you. Cool, fabulous. So what's going to happen, <clears throat> there's going to be a blank screen that comes up first, and then there are going to be some words that come across the top of the screen. With the first set of words, you're going to have eight seconds, and then you're just going to read them and just see what it says. Then we'll be another blank screen. Then you're going to have another set of words, and they're going to have four seconds to read what it says. And then you're going to have another set of words and you're going to have two seconds. So <clears throat> make sure you can see your screen. So you should have a blank screen. So eight, and I want you just to see that reading is more than I just saw the word. So here we go. You're going to have eight seconds for this one. OK, what does that say? I can, I'm looking at people's faces and screen, they're like, <laughs> okay, this one, I'm gonna halve the time. You've got four seconds this time. Give a thumbs up if you know what that said. <clears throat> okay, we've got two seconds this time. Anyone know what that one says? Cool. So I can see people nodding and Roger's like two thumbs up. Reading goes beyond I've seen every single word. It's contextual and your brain can pick when there's a context around it and there's an order and a sequence and a structure. Your brain can work at the speed of light. So when we're asking your brain to read at 25,000 words per minute, we're not asking it to do anything it can't already do. Reading is not just about seeing the words, it's about having order, it's about having structure, it's about having sequence. Whereas most people read like number one, they just start reading and go words, 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 and they're just feeding their mind words. 
with no sense of order. And then your brain has got to work really hard to sort it out. When you start with a sense of purpose, a sense of clarity, you tell your brain what it is, it will start making sense of things as you go along and the process gets so much easier. And the final exercise we're gonna do before we bring it to a close today and we go into a few more questions before you do your next event, your next bit of networking, just take a moment and see if you can read this. And all it needs is a bit of pattern recognition. So most people don't have it. So I can see a few. So Crystal, I can see you smiling and nodding for sure. Seriously, our brains are amazing. All it needs is a little bit of time to adjust itself for what you're asking it to do. And then it will just make light work of things. And so with photo reading, we are tapping into skills and abilities that you already have. All we're doing now is telling your brain, do this, do this. Here's the pattern. Here's the flow. And when you're in that state of relaxed alertness and a way that you can activate left and right brain integration is just cross the midline. So for me to do that will activate left and right brain. It's that simple. When you use the process where you relax the breathing, expanded awareness, so I can see what's going on on my left and my right. My brain is crossed wide. So for me to have an awareness of what's going on on both sides left and right brain have to be involved and if you approach your reading your meetings your networking events your telephone calls even going on a date with that thing about clear sense of purpose expanded awareness and good flow of oxygen because you're going to be feeding the brain I'm telling you, it's a game changer. And if you from this moment on just start previewing everything before you read it and then taking a little break, you'll find when you go back to look at it again, you have a sense of familiarity with everything that you're doing. And of course, I can talk about this subject for several weeks on end, but I won't. We will stop there. So, Roger, I will hand it back over to you. Marilyn, that, <coughs> that was mind blowing. I, uh, when I, when I told EIN's members in previous meetups that you were speaking on the whole subject of 25,000 words a minute, I, I always, uh, I always qualified it. And, and yes, there is science to support that this is really possible. And, um, you have just, um, lifted the veil, showed how it works. Uh, I think this is a fabulous skill. If I had grandchildren, my goodness, what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful life skill uh, this could be. Just imagine the number of books that they could read, the amount of knowledge they could get in the course of their lifetime. In any event, I don't have grandchildren. We're, we're, our members are all entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, micropreneurs, and on their behalf, all 75,000 of us, uh, I thank you hugely for sharing this knowledge, this wisdom, this experience with us. Much, much appreciated, Marilyn, thank you. Oh, you're most welcome, my absolute pleasure. Oh, I, this is one of my favorite topics to speak about. I absolutely love it. And it has just changed so many people's lives and they've gone on to do things that they didn't even think they could do in their lives, in their businesses or those that are studying. So thank you so much for the invitation. Now, um. Are you not going to tell us how to how we can take the course? Oh, I can do. Um, let me just. Um, or, or, at, or at least those of us who are interested, how to follow up with you. Let me. I can do that. What I can do. Hold on a minute. <sighs> OK, so I will put a couple of links in to I'll put a couple of links into the chat. And my website, I can tell you that. So the website, if you want to kind of find me, I could go and pull up another screen. Uh, I'll pull up the slides, but I'll just tell you and I'll spell it. Uh, my website is transformationstm.com. It's T-R-A-N-C-E, as in hypnotic trance, F for Freddy. So F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S-T-M.com forward slash photo reading. I will put that into the chat. And I will also put the link to the online version. So there we go. So let me just do that. <laughs> so there's a photo reading brochure that you can download. I think I've put that in there. So 
da, 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 da. there we go so i have put a link if you want to go and download the photo reading brochure and have a read of that in just in terms of kind of how the photo reading works there's a link to the online version which is transformationstm.newsendler.com if you wanted to take the online workshop actually i think it's still running i did a deal for my e-newsletter list which ends tonight so the link i've put in should take you to the page where it has the 10 percent off and then I'm going to put a link in now, which is the transformationstm.com forward slash photo reading. And that's the main website where I've done a Q&A about the photo reading. There are some testimonial videos from clients. You can hear from Dr. Koss as well, um, where they talk a bit more about it. And yeah, the options are there for the home study course, the workshop when we're not in lockdown and the three day online video webinar version. So those are now in the chat. Marilyn, would you pop your email into the chat as well? I will uh, do that. Because what you've just said is a lot to absorb. I'd like Let to give go. I'd like to give people the opportunity to reach out to you and uh, and and have maybe have a discovery call and see how they can work with you. Perfect. And it's Marilyn Marilyn at transformationstm.com. So that's coming in the chat now as well. So that's all there also. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to say thank you and I'm going to stop the record and then segue into the second part of our meeting. Marilyn, you're welcome to stay with us or you're welcome to go enjoy your nice warm house and then hit the sack. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll stay and listen for a bit. I might run off and make a cup of tea in the interim, but yeah, I'll stay for a bit and see what you all get up to. <laughs> bye bye. Or as they say, cheerio. <laughs>